Ji Yuhang's suggestion to Director Sun was to apply for a loan to expand sales channels. This advice not only addressed the funding issue but also helped the director improve operations. Director Sun was deeply grateful for this and immediately expressed his willingness to give it a try. Ji Yuhang successfully resolved all the bad debts and non-performing loans at the Nanan branch, earning high praise from the leadership. The president of the head office personally discussed with him about transferring him back to the headquarters. Ji Yuhang and Tu Xiaoning embraced, overjoyed by the exciting news. She asked him, which department will you be going to now? He replied, the president of the Jian branch. Tu Xiaoning smiled and said, then from now on, I'll have to call you President Ji. Ji Yuhang suggested spending a vacation together with Tu Xiaoning before he officially took up his new position, to enjoy a brief, relaxing time. However, Tu Xiaoning declined the vacation because she wanted to focus on achieving more results for Rao Jing before her maternity leave helping Rao Jing secure her position as general manager of the business development department. Ling Wei and Qi Yu, with both families arranging to meet. However, Ling Wei's father was unable to make it. For the occasion, Ling Wei had carefully chosen an upscale restaurant, but to her surprise, the luxurious setting made Qi Yu's parents uncomfortable, leading to an awkward and unpleasant atmosphere. After dinner, Qi Yu escorted his parents to their hotel. His father angrily scolded him, accusing him of being vain for dating a girl from a family like Ling Wei's. He demanded that Chi Yu break up with Ling Wei immediately. Chi Yu responded, "Dad, Ling Wei and I truly love each other, and we won't break up." His father retorted, "Nonsense. Her parents didn't even bother to meet us. It's obvious they look down on you." His mother added, "Your father just cares about you. You're our only son." and we don't want you to suffer just for the sake of wealth and status. After Ji Yuhang immediately brought Zhao Fanggang under his wing and entrusted him with the important task of managing high-value clients, Zhao Fanggang confidently assured him that he would do everything in his power to help him secure his position as branch president. However, Ji Yuhang reminded him, we are no longer just competing between departments, but against all of Dai Rui's major branches. The road ahead will be full of challenges. Tu Xiaoning noticed that Rao Jing was experiencing discomfort due to her pregnancy and expressed concern. Rao Jing reassured her, saying, I'm fine. Let's focus on the client first. Tu Xiaoning then shared, I found an established business undergoing a leadership transition to the younger generation, and they're looking to expand significantly. The funding they need is likely between 50 million to 100 million. If we can secure this deal, Sister Jing, your position as manager will be solid. Zhao Fanggang presented his research report on the Yupin Tea Company to Ji Yuhang. At the same time, Rao Jing was reviewing the report Tu Xiaoning had provided her. Rao Jing remarked, a company like this is definitely being pursued by all the banks in Xincheng and all the branches of Dai Rui, right? Ji Yuhang responded to Zhao Fanggang. Other banks will certainly be after such a high-quality client as well. We need to act quickly to gain the upper hand. Zhao Fanggang nodded in agreement. Ji Yuhang instructed Zhao Fanggang to make contact with the client discreetly, so that other banks would not discover their actions. Rao Jing told Tu Xiaoning, the key to competing for clients is information, so our plan must remain absolutely confidential. Tu Xiaoning sampled some tea from Yupin Tea and keenly noticed that it included several herbal fragrances that catered to young people's preferences, which explained its popularity. When Ji Yuhang saw her and asked, What are you drinking? she replied, It's for beauty and skin care. Matters of women should be less of a concern for men. The next day, Rao Jing and Tu Xiaoning accompanied the president to meet with the accountant of Yupin Tea Company to discuss the collaboration. Meanwhile, Ji Yuhang and Zhao Fanggang brought the deputy mayor of Xincheng to Yupin Tea Company to meet with the company's vice president. Tu Xiaoning observed many exquisite coffee-making tools at Yupin Tea Company and mentioned to Rao Jing, it seems like Yupin might be interested in getting into the coffee business. Rao Jing replied that she had noticed the same thing and had asked accountant Zhou about it earlier. Zhou had explained that the new general manager and the old one had just returned from abroad and currently preferred drinking coffee, which was why they had purchased the coffee equipment. Zhao Fanggang said to Ji Yuhang, Did you notice those coffee-making tools? 
They must be launching a new product soon, right? Ji Yuhang replied, that's right. When they got home in the evening, Tu Xiaoning asked Ji Yuhang, are all returnees really so unconventional? Especially in family businesses, do they always have to abandon traditional practices and innovate? Ji Yuhang replied, are the clients you visited today also returnees? Tu Xiaoning responded, I'm trying to discuss life with you, and you keep bringing up clients. It's so boring. The next day at work, Rao Jing said to Tu Xiaoning, I didn't expect that Mr. Fu, the tea industry second generation, would be so fond of coffee. Tu Xiaoning replied, Also, did you notice all the samples of fast-moving coffee on their display shelves? Rao Jing acknowledged, Yes, I saw that. Tu Xiaoning then asked, Do you think Mr. Fu might want to turn their tea into a similar kind of fast-moving beverage? Ji Yuhang said to Zhao Fang Gang, Yupin's new production line is a ready-to-drink beverage brand. It looks like they are moving into the fast-moving consumer goods sector. Zhao Fang Gang responded, that fits. When I called their vice president yesterday, he mentioned they wanted to rent some storefronts in the city. It seems they plan to set up something like a milk tea shop. After work, Tu Xiaoning and Ji Yuhang went for a walk. Ji Yuhang saying, what's the current rate at your place? She said, President Ji, are you mixing personal and professional matters? Our five-year rate is 4.8%, with the factory and equipment as collateral. He asked, what's the total amount? She responded, about 100 million yuan. He joked, how could I possibly hear the truth from you? When they got home, Tu Xiaoning noticed that Ji Yuhang had a privacy screen on his computer. She deliberately knocked over her teacup, and while Ji Yuhang was getting up to clean it, she took a peek at his computer and confirmed that it was indeed the same company. Ji Yuhang, noticing her curiosity, decided to discipline her by picking her up and carrying her to the bedroom. Mr. Fu asked his vice president and the finance team about the loan negotiations, how are things going with the loan? The vice president replied, over the past few days, we've been in touch with some banks and city officials. Both Accountant Joe and I think there are two banks that are quite promising. Accountant Joe mentioned that one proposes using a letter of credit, which has a high cost performance ratio. The other offers a longer loan term with slower repayment. It's up to you to decide. Mr. Fu reviewed the two documents, one from Dai Rui Jian and the other from Dai Rui Xing Cheng. Chi Yu took Ling Wei to visit a property at Qing Shui Fang, planning to buy a home and get married through his own efforts. However, Ling Wei felt that Chi Yu's reluctance to live in her larger house was because he was dissatisfied with her family's wealth. She confided in Tu Xiaoning, asking, Is it my fault for having money? Chi Yu confided his emotional troubles to Ji Yu Hang, he listened to the complaint about many difficulties of a marriage, Ji Yu Hang couldn't help but reflect something in his own.